Hello and welcome to Commodore 128 Assembly Language Programming. Um, we're going to work on the farming game today and get started on um, designing some of the character graphics. And we're going to have to write a little code to put them on the screen so that we can test them, you know, see how they look as we go along and stuff. Um, I actually started and then realized I had a recording problem, so um, one thing I want to mention is that I. Um, created a new repository for this and I will I'll push it up to uh, GitLab when I'm done and put a link from the main um, from the main repository there um, but I thought this game is going to be complex enough that it needs to have its own needs of its own repository its own place for its code so um, so far I've just created a few files here um, mostly just kind of placeholders. We've got a main, um, which will be the main file that we assemble. Um, it's going to create a program called farm. Um, your, your program that you assemble doesn't have to have the same name as the one that gets created when you assemble it. I've, I've done it that way so far just for convenience, but it doesn't have to be that way. Um, we're going to work on this. We're going to work on this routine called setup characters, which is in characters, and this is going to be the one that actually puts the character, puts our new character definitions into the 80 column um, memory. So, to do this, and, this, and that's where I was when I had to start over. So to do this, um, down here after the characters label. Um, I think the easiest way to do it is to use um, byte um, symbols or directives. I'm not sure. I wouldn't call it a command, but anyway, you can show binary with um, hashes and dots. So instead of, you know, you can write a binary number like this, but if you, let's say we put a few of those in a row, it's kind of hard to look at this and see what it's going to look like on the screen. Let's say we do something like this, right? You know, what's that going to look like on the screen? It's hard to tell because ones and zeros are about the same size as far as one doesn't really stand out that much from the other. So what you can do instead of that, this, this assembler at least will understand if you use dots and then use pound signs where you want the ones. So dots are zeros, pound signs are ones. So I'm not an artist, um, and so this might be painful, um, but what I'm thinking is, like for grass, I'm thinking, okay, we'll We'll fill in, you know, most of them towards the bottom, and then fewer as we go towards the top. Um, and we'll just have to see how this looks as we go. So, I think it's easier it's, it's easier to see what that is going to look like on the screen than it is when you're just using zeros and ones. Um, but it'll read this as this will be zero zero, this will be four four, this will be also four four, four four, uh, six four, um, seven six, uh, seven f and ff. That's what they'll be in hexadecimal. All right. So that would be our first character. Our eight bytes. What what I've got here, if it's, I guess I didn't really explain what I've got here, but each one of these then is a single byte in binary form, you know, shown in binary format, zeros and ones, and so all together we have eight bytes here, and that would make up one character. And so we need to take those eight bytes and put them in character memory in in the eighty column in the eighty column chips RAM. And 
to do that then, let's see, and we're also going to want, well, well, we'll come back to that later. We'll just work on the shape of it now. Um, right now in the, in the emulator here, I've got the background set to a gray, and that's probably the background color we're going to have during the game. It's, it's kind of hard to tell. We'll just have to, we'll just have to fiddle with it. There's not really a dirt color available. If you, you know, if you want to, you know, we've got 16 colors to work with here, so, um, there isn't really one that's just called, you know, that looks like dirt, and so whatever our background is is going to have to be one of our 16 colors. Um, if we wanted to write, let's write a little quick basic program. Um, for x equals 1 to 16, color 5 comma x. 5 is the foreground color for the 80 column screen. And then print So that's just a little bit of basic. This is going to print hello world with a bunch of bangs in each of the 16 colors. Okay, so there are there are 16 colors. I guess there is a brown there that could work as dirt. Um, might have to might have to fiddle with that. Might have to try that out um, and see how it works. But for now, for now, I'll just leave this gray back there. Um, why is it st stuck? Why is it acting stuck? Or am I just... There's that brown. I don't know. That that might be a better background color. We'll probably just have to experiment with the colors a little bit. Um, but let's see. Is my program still there? No. All right. I don't know why it. I don't know why it hung up there. Oh, I know what it was. It wasn't hung up. It was just that the foreground color ended up the same as the background color. All right. Try it one more time. Say one cop one comma x last time. Or five five comma x five is the foreground for this screen. That's right. change the color back at the end so it doesn't stay on whatever it ended on. Okay. So if we want to see our grass as green, well, right now against this background it would be hard to see that. Um, we'll just stick with black in the foreground for now, I guess. Okay, so enough fiddling around with that. Let's look back at the book here. Here's our character set. Let me blow this up. Oops. There we blow it up. So, I know the the emulator's in the way a little bit, but just looking here on the left, um, the characters, the letters start right at the beginning. We need to keep the letters in the character set, is basically my concern. We're going to need letters and numbers to print out dialogue between people. So as far as our other characters go, our you know graphics characters for the game, 
we can plug them in wherever else in the set we want. Um, especially because we have two sets to work with on the 80 column screen. Um, let's see. See the first set, set one, when you don't have the attribute, the, the, the second set, attribute bit set, has the capital letters and then it also has all these graphics characters. And we may even want to use a few of those um, if they happen to be useful to us. And in the second set, you get the lowercase letters along with the capital letters. And so we can wipe out the first set's capital letters and we still have them available in the second set. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and just start putting them in, putting in our, our new characters, replacing the ones in set one, and then we'll, we'll have the capital letters in set two to work with when we want to print out dialogue. Um, we may need to adjust that later on. We'll just see. Like, for instance, it looks like, go back to this. For instance, I think the only at sign is in set one. So if we want to be able to print an at sign in our dialogue, we're going to need to keep that one or redefine it somewhere else in the set. But um, for now, we'll just we'll start there and wipe it out because I don't really expect to need it. Um, all right. So now the question is, where in the 80 column memory does that do the characters start? I believe they start at 2000, although, yeah, I'm pretty sure about that. Yeah, that's right. They start at 2000. So we need to look at our library here. And so to start putting bytes in at 2000, we need to move the RAM pointer to a location. Um, we have routines for moving it to the beginning of text and the beginning of attribute memory, but this is this is different. We want to move it to a particular place in screen and we want to move it to a particular place in RAM that isn't either of those, and so we're gonna to need to use set RAM pointer right here. Alright. So the first thing we'll do then is load A. Let's see, A is the high byte, so that's zero. Y is the or sorry, A is the low byte, so that's zero. Y is the high byte, so that's twenty to be to go to two thousand. And then set RAM pointer. Alright. So that is going to set the RAM pointer in the 80 column chip pointing to 2000, which is the beginning of character memory. All right. So now we want to write these 8 bytes into that. And so the way to do that, let's see, how do we want to do that? Excuse me. Um, I get thirsty when I sit here talking too long. Um, all right, so the way to do that, let's set up an index, or let's see, we can't use X because X, X and A both get clobbered when we call when we call the routines to write these things. Um, if we look back here again, when we write, uh, let's see, which routine writes, there we are, write 80 byte writes a byte to the current RAM pointer, we pass the byte in A, and let's see, find it down here, okay, it, it's going to clobber X and it's going to it's going to clobber A, but actually it won't clobber A, it just uses A, but it doesn't touch Y, so we can use Y as our index. So let's load y with zero. Um, load a from grass, 
comma y jump subroutine write 80 byte increment y compare y to 8 branch if not equal back up to here okay that would be yeah that would be the spot all right so what that's going to do is it's going to loop eight times based on y and this, I, this is a mistake compare y to eight so that's going to loop eight times on y and load a byte from down here write it to the location that we set the ram pointer to up here and if you watch the previous ones, you, you know, the RAM pointer in, autom automatically increments every time you write it. So once we've set it there, we don't have to do anything else with it. And that will put those eight bytes into the at sign location um, in the character set. And then we'll return. So this is just going to set up one character. And then we'll see how it works. Okay. Garbage data. Okay, that's probably because I did probably because I do not want those. Yeah. All right. So we've assembled main that created farm as our executable, and so back here. So if we look at 1300, that's where our program starts. Go 1300, boom, breaks out. Okay, now if I start typing at signs over here, there's our grass. And it's black, so it's ugly, but that's our that's that's the grass character that I just created. Um Now, obviously, these character, you know, character creation is going to take some time, and like I said, I'm probably not going to do it all on video because that would be extremely tedious. But um, it's just going to take some time to design these characters. Now, one thing you can probably see here is that there's a space, there's a single pixel clear in between each line. Um, that's because there is a there is a space there for underline, and we may want to. We may want to take that out. We may want to remove that by tinkering with the um, with the 80 column chip settings, because I don't think you know. I, I think in our graphics, when we start drawing things on the screen, especially things like people or houses or whatever, anything that's more than one character, we're not going to want that space in the middle of it. We're going to want the characters to butt right up against each other, um, the same way they do horizontally. So. We'll have to um, we'll have to work on that. Um, another thing is the characters can potentially be 16 pixels tall. Um, in fact, I think they can go up to 32 if you if you want to, but I don't know why you'd want to do that. But um, they actually use 16 bytes in in the character memory, but because of the way it's normally displayed on the screen, it only displays eight. But we can, by changing by changing some of the um, settings in the 80 column chip, we can let it show 16. I don't know if that would be a good idea, because each character can only have one color, like we talked about before. Um, and so, if you go 16 high, that whole 16 bytes, you know, 16 by 8 or 8 by 16, however you want to look at it, can only be one foreground color. Whereas if you stack two bytes on top of each other, it's going to be a little more trouble and you're going to use up more of your characters, but you'll be able to have two different colors in those bytes. So I'm kind of thinking probably going to stay at 8 or maybe 9 if we take out the, the underline, but and, and stack more bytes on top of each other to allow more color flexibility. Um, okay, so wonder what that would look like green. Let's see. Oops. Uh, wrong 
можно. I don't know which color is green. I'm trying to find it here. Okay, there it is. Yeah, like I said, it's terrible against that background. Um, uh, let's see, what if I change the background back to that gray? I can find it. That's a dark gray. Yeah, I don't know. That may be, for grass, that may be okay once there's other stuff in it. But like I said, we, we can tinker around with the actual graphics. Um, Alright. So, let's stick another thing here. Let's do water. Now, water... really stretching my um, stretching my skills here um, try to kind of make a wave Something like that. See how that goes. Okay. So now we need to copy 16 bytes. And eventually I will probably do this instead of hard coding in the amount, we'll probably put a stop at the end and say, okay, when you get to this point, just stop there. But this is the simplest way to do it for now. Um, okay, let's assemble. And load it. CPU jam? Really? That's interesting. Why would that be? All we're doing is setting the RAM pointer and then we're writing 16 bytes instead of 8. Time. That's odd. Okay, well, let's come back over here then. Now, I made a mistake there on purpose, basically, to see something. Okay, so there's my grass character. Now, the next character should be the A, but I'm still getting A's when I press A. And that's because of what I said before about there being 16 bytes in the character memory for each character. So, if we come, we're going to have to come back here. And before we go on to the next, what we need to do is write 8 bytes and then write 8 zero bytes. And then write another 8 bytes and write 8 zero bytes. So we're going to need a counter. We'll just have a local counter here. All right, so load Y is zero. Let's see, store Y into counter. Let's see. 
let's do it this way. Load A with zero, store it into counter, transfer it also to Y. Um, or no, sorry. Now yeah, hold on. I gotta stop and think a second. Um, No, Y should keep, okay, yeah, Y should just keep increasing. Let's go back to this, load Y. Okay, there's where we were. So we want to do that. And then we want to do... So we want to do that, and then we want to do eight more. Let's see. The thing is, we need our index. load y with zero, Let's store that into counter, okay, Hmm. I'm kind of overthinking this just because it. I want to make it reasonably efficient, but um, and we only have one. We only have one available register for counting with this thing. So let's see. Yeah, that's fine. So when we get here then, we fall through, we just need to go ahead and send eight more zeros. And so with it when, without touching Y, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. So we want to load A with zero. and then store that in counter. Let's do this. And then jump to subroutine, right, 80 byte, increment, or let's see. Now we want to load A with 8, store that into counter, and then load A with 0, and come back to here, decrement, counter, branch not equal back up to there, and then branch it equal. say. Okay. So what this is going to do is it's going to start start y out at 0. Load a from graphs indexed on y and write it. Do that 8 times branching back up to here. And then when it falls through after 8 of them, then it starts a counter counting down from 8, loads A with 0, okay, so that can stay there, this can come to here, writes that 0 to wherever the RAM pointer is pointing, and then decrements the counter, branches if not equal back up to here, if it is equal, it'll fall through and hit this one, and so then it'll branch back up to here and start on the next, start on the next one. Um, 
although, well now it's going to be an infinite loop, and so <clears throat> so we need to compare y to 16 here and then branch branch if not equal back up to next okay that way we'll do 16 bytes but we're filling in eight zeros after each set of eight I think that is correct so let's assemble load it all sorts of bad things happen um, and they're still happening it uh, apparently it still was in it still is an infinite loop because it uh, yeah I'm not sure why it was at 1493 oh because that's the, um, the 80 column routines are down there somewhere, I suppose. Yeah, that's where it writes. Yeah, that's the, the right to write to the 80 column register routine. Um, okay, back to the code. What's going on here? from grass comma y we write it that part worked before so that should still be fine then we load the counter with 8 and write 0 decrementing the counter And so that should go eight times. Branch if not equal back up to there. And then when it falls through, we compare y to 16. And if it's not equal. So what's the problem? That should... That all seems correct. I'm missing something, obviously, but it seems correct. Um, let's just make sure. Well, let's do a couple of things here. Um, over here in main. Let's make an init section and here we want to set up, let's let's set up our banks. I know that's not an issue this time but let's just make sure we're always in the right bank because we've, we've run into trouble with that before so Let's make sure we're in bank 15 so that everything's available for now. We'll, we'll change that later when we need more space. Um, and then let's jump to FF5F, which switches to 80 columns. Because right now the emulator is, whenever I reset it, the emulator goes back to 40 columns. So let's do that. And then... Turn at the end of that. Okay. So now we'll init it by doing that stuff and then jump to setup characters. Uh, value not 
find Oh, don't want a dot on the front of that. There we go. Don't need a dot on the front of it, I guess. It could have one, but it doesn't need one. Okay. Alright, so it's still doing that. Whatever it is that it's doing, it's still doing it. So, let's um, fix that. look at the code here. So the init stuff here at the beginning, there's the init routine and then here's setup characters. So let's let's put a breakpoint put a breakpoint right in here somewhere. So that's going to be, here's our, here's where we set that, so let's put a break at 1305, 130F and start it. Alright, so it broke out there and it's going to set up the RAM pointer and then Okay, so we're setting up, we're going into that routine now. Um, I don't necessarily want to go into it. I guess I don't have a choice because I'm already in it. And yeah, let's start over here. Okay. Next. I don't think next should go into it. No, there we go. In the assemb in the monitor, I should I should explain what I'm doing. In the monitor, Z steps to the next instruction wherever the next instruction is. N just goes to the next instruction in the in the main stream of the program where you're at. So basically, it it doesn't descend into JSRs. So I don't want to descend into every one of these routines that's writing to the 80 column chip because we've already tested those. We know what they do. We just want to stay here. We just want to go through the setup characters right here and see why it's continuing on after doing 16 loops. All right, so right now we are at right here, right before next, loading Y with zero. And let me, let's do it this way. Okay, let's get things next to each other here so we can see what's going on. This won't be as awkward once I've been working on this for a while, I promise. Um, Alright. So now, let me do one more thing. Shrink this up a little. It's easier to see what's going on. Okay, so now we can compare the code on the left to the monitor on the right. So we load an A from grass, comma Y, or characters, comma Y. I should have. No, that's fine. The same thing, but I'll probably want to change that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're loading A from that. Y is currently zero, like we just set it to. And. Then we jump to write 80 byte, then we increment y, compare it to 8, branch if not equal, so it's going to branch back up there. I'm going to load a with the next thing. Okay, so we're going, to, we're going through the loop 8 times. This is the loop that worked fine before, so it should be okay. Now, now we increment y, it becomes 8. One moment. 
Okay, had to take a call there. Um, all right, continuing on here. We compare to eight, and so this time it should fall through. Yeah, and so it it's going to store eight in the counter, and then load A with zero, jump to write it, decrement the counter, branch back up to there, write it again, decrement it, and so this should happen about eight, well it should happen exactly eight times. and it just keeps happening. So why would that be? Why would it happen more than eight times? The counter is at 1337. Oh, maybe I haven't done it eight times yet. Okay, there it fell through. Um, now compare to 16, compare y to 16, well it's not the, it's not up to 16 yet, so that's fine. So it'll branch back up to next, and now it starts going through the next set of 8, incrementing y on up from 9 to 16. Oh, oh, there it is, there it is. Mm. I'm comparing y to 8 up there, but it's not going to be 8 this time. It's going to be 16, so I can't do that. I can't do it that way. Um, all right. Basically, we're going to need... We need two counters. Um... I'd like to keep y as my index, and so I'd like to not use it as, a, as another counter when we're going through the eight zeros. So I guess I'll have two other counters. Um, we'll call the second one z counter. It'll be the one that counts through the zeros. So this will be Z counter. All right. Yeah. write a little pseudocode here. We want to go for y and 0 to end, whatever end is. Right now end is going to be 16. Um, write 8 bytes from characters comma y and then write 8 zeros okay yeah all right so we get here okay I think I'm getting it we'll store this into counter we'll put eight in counter and then instead of, we'll still increment y, but instead of comparing y, we will decrement counter and branch if not equal on that. So we'll use, let's call this c counter for character counter, and then z counter for zero counter, just to keep things straight. So we'll, we'll, we'll loop. We'll loop on C counter eight times up here, and then we'll loop on Z counter eight times down here, and then when we fall through there, 
we'll compare to 16, we'll compare y to 16 because y is our ultimate index into the character array and then branch if not equal back up to there. All right. I think now that's finally right. Let's find out. Nope. Oh, value not defined C counter. Okay. We've got to put a dot in front of it. I'm using dots on all these just to keep them local to the file. Each file has its own zone automatically and that way um, that way they're all local. Okay, let's reset everything. Okay. Let's see, what did I do? Oh, I have to make this a little bigger so we can see what's going on first. Um, broke out. All right, let's start over here. Let's delete that breakpoint. Is it not working? We're doing whatever it should be doing. Um, we're still doing the init thing. It should still be switching to 80 columns. So why is it not switching to 80 columns? It's, it's still. For some reason, it's resetting back into 40 columns. All right, it's going to take a little getting used to doing it this way. All right, so there's the grass character, and there's the water character. Um, Definitely gonna have to work on the colors for these things because they don't look like what you know. They don't look like much, like this. It, uh, you know, green on black or whatever. They don't look like what they're supposed to look like. But we'll tinker around with the colors. I guess that'll be the next thing we'll have to figure out. Is okay. Basically, every time you write a character, you're gonna to want to write its color with it. So the grass is gonna to have to be green. The the water is gonna to have to be blue, and so on. Um, and we'll just see how that goes. Um, all right. So I think so. That works anyway. Is what I was getting. Is what I was getting at. That works correctly now. It writes the sixteen there, and then and then stops. Um, so now I basically just need to design some more characters so that we have some characters to start messing around with and, and messing with the colors and see how they look. So I think I'm going to stop there for today. I'm not actually sure how much time this has got in it because I had to stop there partway through. Um, so I think I'm going to stop there and work on some more of these characters and then when I come back we'll have a little more that we can tinker with the colors on and start to put them next to each other and see how they're going to look on the screen and get get them a little bit um, get them a little bit organized so that we've got something to, something to display as we start working on the game here so this one was a little haphazard but I hope it was interesting and thank you for watching